Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Now that finally some weddings are happening, big events are happening again, it's time to talk about flowers during weddings and who else to ask about that than uh, Joey Azu from Alexandra Farms, the boutique farm with the beautiful garden roses. So without further ado, let's quickly get uh, Joey into the live stream. Hello. 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 Good morning, John. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. How are you? Terrific. Yeah. Thank goodness. Healthy. I mean, that's that's still the most important thing uh, <laughs> in the world. Sure is. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see your big smile again. Normally, uh, we're next to each other at the exhibition in Moscow. That's and, right. Uh, <laughs> but it, uh, we, have, we haven't seen each other for a long time already. Will we see each other at the IFTF show in Feithausen in November? Yeah, finally again. <laughs> That's going to be the first big show since the pandemic started. Yeah. Pro Flora was cancelled. The World Floral Expo was cancelled. Um, we haven't been at any shows in a year and a half. It's incredible. It, it's unbelievable. You can see some local shows going on. Hoof show was going on in the US. Right. Uh, but the international ones, uh, yeah, the one in right. Moscow is going on, but more or less online. Yeah. Impossible to travel to Moscow or to Russia, right. so that makes it difficult as well for all the foreign right. uh, companies. But yeah, uh, let's hope uh, we can see each other in 5000 again. Right. But it's 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 important for us to go to shows because we get to show customers new varieties like we're going to talk about today. We also get to see the, the varieties that other growers are growing, and we also get to see the new varieties that breeders are showing at the shows yeah. and it's hard to keep up with all the breeders and all the varieties when when you don't go to shows so i think that ifdf is going to be really important we need to take our cameras and and see everything that's happening yeah i mean it's not only showing the new varieties but also looking for reactions of people how do they react on your new varieties right. or maybe right. some some possible new varieties what do right. they think of it i mean that's so important that's uh, right you already had, or this year, you introduced nine new varieties. Well, last year during COVID, uh, we had a really hard time when all of the weddings stopped in March and April. And um, we had some dark times where sales were very, very low. And we had to furlough our employees and eradicate some hectares, just reduce our costs right away. We had to. Yeah. But by September, we were feeling a little bit more optimistic about the market about the world recuperating. And we decided that we weren't gonna stand still, that we were gonna go ahead and launch the varieties that we had tested for three or four years before and launch them in 2021. Um, and so we did that. And, and one of the exciting things of that launch was that it included spray roses, which we had not had before. And we, we selected gar uh, spray roses for launching because we found some with certain colors that we thought were just well, actually, we didn't think. Some of the designers and influencers we work with told us that the colors were important because we thought they were a little bit dark. <laughs> and yeah. they said, no, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so we launched uh, three spray roses from the Wabara line yeah. that are dirty mauve colors or, or pink and brown colors that are so much in fashion right now. Um, and, and, and they've been in, 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 in trend for quite a while. It isn't, it isn't, something I hope that's going to finish. I think it's something that different brides will pick and it'll be, you know, popular, not as popular as white or as peach, but, but somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's one of our varieties. That was Lola, Loli. It's uh it's Wabaro. Wabaro of course is a, of a Japanese breeder. That's uh, very well known there and has been breeding for years. Um, yes, that is Loli also, right? Loli, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful one, and the color is, is really unique. And I, I get the feeling with all the weddings that now are going on, people want to celebrate their wedding in a unique way, but also with unique flowers as well. They want to celebrate it more. I even heard people going uh, or downgraded on the venue just to spend more on, on flowers to make it more unique. So that's, that's something, I mean, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> 
you know, John, we have we have 60 varieties and all of them have a different shape or a different color or a different fragrance. They're all unique in a certain way, but all of them are tools for florists to make great things for their brides and to really please them. So you have large white roses, small white roses, fragrant white roses, ivory white, yellow white, pinkish white. And now you have all of these sand colors. Uh, and skin tones that are also superb. So florists have this palette of colors that they can use in garden roses that was was not available before. Yeah, uh, sixty varieties. When we started in two thousand and six and two thousand and seven, we had eight, and none of them were white. <laughs> there was an ivory colored rose that didn't open and didn't have a fragrance. It was the only white garden rose we had. Yeah. Now we have six. I mean, yeah, that did. And yeah, you're working together with all the breeders, even the Japanese uh, breeders uh, you're working. And then, I mean, it's a great story how you ended up there and, and finally getting the varieties. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot of work. <laughs> and now that we can travel again, maybe we'll go back and start start testing some some more ones. Uh, the, the, a couple of others that we launched. Well, I don't know if you have pictures of uh, Ioe Fuga, which is the yeah. lavender, dirty lavender rose. Um, Let me all these spray roses happen to have a very good vase life, not just so they can be used for wedding work, of course, but also if you're a florist, especially in the States, although I guess the same phenomenon happens in Europe where you're, you're a florist and you're competing against the uh, Trader Joe's or against the Walmart next door. Um, what's the supermarket chain in Holland? Uh, Albert Hein. Albert, Albert Hein, right? Yeah. So you're a florist and you, and, and you're competing with Albert Hein selling Kenyan roses for, a dollar seventy-five, six stems or something. It, it's very inexpensive. So as a florist, you're looking to differentiate yourself, right? And and one of the ways you can do that is by having great design work. But you can also do that by using flowers that are uncommon, flowers that are special, that are different, like these. They have yeah. great vase life and they have great uh, colors. And the sprays, especially, fill out a lot of space. Uh, it they, they they cost about the same as a single stem, but they fill the space of three or four stems. So I think it's a good value and you can use it for, for vase work um, and it yeah. fills a lot of the space. And I think a lot of florists still don't know that the vase life is good of the, the garden roses. Um, yeah, there's an old paradigm, right? Where, where garden roses were actually varieties people had in, in their shrub business that when they bloomed, they would sell the varieties. But ours have been selected for the cut flower market. In the case of David Austin and Wabaro, they were bred specifically for cut flowers. And in some of the others, they were selected for cut flowers. So our varieties, we've tested thousands, John. If you if you one day come to our farm, you'll see we have a block that's just dedicated to trials. Mm -hmm. And there's right now, there must be 200 varieties on test. And we've tested through the years over 1,000 or 2,000. And we select for vase life and for, for cut flower characteristics. Uh, it, it, sometimes it's very hard to discard a beautiful variety because it doesn't last more than seven days in the vase, but we do it every year. It's very hard, but we do it. So that's how mm. Ifuga, the lavender. And then finally, we have the Sola, which is similar to Ioli in, the, in that it has some brown in it. Mm -hmm. um, also a spray rose, also unique uh, sand colors. This is a, a, a light mauve, but it's, it's, it's sandy in the sense that it's darker it has a, a low tone yeah there are two different pictures there there's one with the light background so now you can see the difference because it's the right. same variety wow <laughs> oh and, and uh, i think that's also one of the nice things what you do is making uh, these pictures which i really love so you can see the, how the color is changing uh and so it's way easier for a florist as well or for a bride to understand which way the color goes. Yeah, one of the characteristics we look for in the varieties that we launch is the performance in the vase. This is this is something that, that most garden roses have, but not too many of the hybrid tea greenhouse roses have. And that is that when they're in the vase, if they're cut right, they will bloom for you. They will they will open up to 90, 80, sometimes 110% uh uh aperture and that is really important to us we think that that's what is romantic and charismatic about the roses that's what makes them interact with the with the owner um so yeah. we look for that characteristic and in our and we wanted to show that in a two-dimensional picture so all of our varieties on our website have what we call a point of cut pictures which shows the variety when we cut it and then 
each day in the vase how it develops and we try to get florists and designers to use them for events at one of their most open points because that's what gives them the more value for the buck the more beauty for the buck um some it's a shame when some florists use uh, tight buds of garden roses because they're not getting the true benefit so we yeah. did those pictures to show florists to be comfortable letting them open they will open use them after four or five days in water look at the difference here for example can you imagine a bouquet of five of these stems when they're tight versus when they're open i mean that yeah that's it's, it's four or five times the size exactly so if you're doing vase work and you want them to bloom in your customer's house use them like picture number one and sell them at that point and advise your customer listen these are going to open up for you and you need to show them this picture yeah uh, but if you're going to do an event and you want them at their most perfect size maybe i would use the most open one or maybe something in between the middle and the most open one so to have a little bit more color but certainly not the tight butt stage i think it's it's also now that people are more more working from home people want to see flowers that open up they don't want to see static flowers i mean it's great to to come downstairs in the morning and see that your roses opened up a little bit more or changed color or your tulips or your lilies are opening up. I think that's what makes it interesting. I, I agree with you 100%. They're, they're performing for you. They, they have a dance that they're doing just for your pleasure. And every day it's different and more beautiful. It's fabulous. Yeah. And I, I even mean, like them when they're dying. I still think it's part of their dance. <laughs> I think it's, it's yeah. appealing. I don't I don't throw them away very quickly. I let them fall <laughs> over. Yeah, but it, it's it's part of life as well. I mean, you go from, from beautiful and then uh, you and me are getting more beautiful by, by the year, of course. But <laughs> 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 right. It's, it's so beautiful to see those flowers open and then and dry in a bit later and, and, and dying. I mean that's it, it's beautiful. But also uh, so. yeah, the whole show, what's happening in the vase and it, it's so beautiful. And, and uh, I worked with chrysanthemums, but also like the ones that were opening up, something was happening, not the st static things in a, in a vase. And I think now that right. people are more at home, more looking at uh, the bouquet or the flowers or plants they bought, they want to see something happening as well. Absolutely, I agree. And, and most of our roses have that characteristic. As a matter of fact, our Ashley rose, I don't know if you're familiar with Ashley and white Ashley. Yeah. They open so much that it's 120%. They open up like an umbrella. It's hard to see the stem because the, the petals cover it. It's There it is. Wow, you've got pictures of everything. Yeah. <laughs> that is an amazing variety. It's a sister of regular Ashley, which is a, a pink, uh, medium pink. Uh, it, they're very unproductive varieties. They're very slow to grow. But that's why they're so beautiful so they're part of our line i mean yeah and then i think your varieties or the varieties you are growing it's impossible for another rose grower to grow them because they will get a headache only looking at them already oh the, the only reason we still grow them is because it's the only thing we grow if we had anything else we would have said no 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 let's go with this other thing because these are too hard yeah but we don't have a choice. It's either garden roses or nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but if you see the effect and, and, and some people say, yeah, garden roses, they are expensive. And I say, have you ever bought them? And, and no, no, because they're too expensive. I said, but the, there's a reason why they, you have to pay a little bit more than normal roses or other flowers. The whole story behind it, how long it takes to grow, uh, how many flowers uh, they're growing on a square meter, all those things they add up but the beauty you get in a vase it's i mean right. it's unbelievable and you know within the garden rose range there's different uh, costs right it, it depends a lot on the productivity and the branding things but but we have a rolls royce which is david austin and, yeah, and yeah. maybe wabara then we have uh, the mercedes which are, are probably the, the princess roses then we have bmws and then we even have what i would call toyotas white o'hara and pink o'hara they're fabulous garden roses they're not that expensive more expensive than others and when they open they're double the size of anything else so even if you pay double for it you're still getting value out of it yeah. so depending on your bride and the kind of wedding you're doing you have a huge range of choices 
the queen is going to get married with David Austin for sure. But maybe there's a princess somewhere that needs to marry with princess. And maybe there's a nephew of the princess that gets married with the Alexander Farmer Deluxe collection. Yeah. There's something for everybody. I mean, and it, it's, I already showed the poster, but I can show it again. You can download it as well from the website, alexanderfarms.com. Uh, but also the website is really worthwhile uh, taking a look at with all the different varieties and also uh, how they look in the different cut stages. I think for a florist doing weddings, this poster should be in your shop, showing your customers, okay, this is possible. Uh, these are the colors, these are the shapes. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what's possible. It is. There's so many options. Sometimes it's it's too many options, um, but we want to give everybody as many tools as possible to make them be able to design. There's there's been a couple of designers, John, that come to our farm. Um, we try to bring people that like our flowers all the time, and I realize how important it is that we realize that we have this joint thing between the designers and the growers, right? Yeah. Our roses are beautiful, but if they're not beautifully designed, it's not complete. And of course, designers need beautiful flowers to make beautiful designs. So we have this partnership. Yeah. Um, and so our, our, what we give to the partnership is lots of great colors and varieties and shapes. And what designers bring is beautiful designs and beautiful artwork. So together, we're very strong. I mean, yeah, you, you, one can go without the other. I mean, and the whole pandemic showed that as well. I mean, we all right. need each other and, and to right. stand out. You make beautiful roses, but people need to make something beautiful out of it as well. But they right. also, the passion that you have, and not only you, everybody who's working at Alexandra Farms. I mean, I received the boxes. And it's just a present to open the box and see how it's packed and how it's taken care of with the names of the people who packed it uh, there. I mean, wow, just wow. Thank um, you. Yes, we take great pride. And we found that when, when we put people's name, when people put their names on the bunch, they, they're filled with pride that their name, their work is going out to the world. Yeah. And in the post harvest, we have pictures of brides in Japan or brides in Holland or in the States getting married with our bouquets. And they realize that that's, that's what they're doing. They're creating these beautiful flowers for brides to get married. Yeah, so I'm very proud of that. To be part of the most important day of their lives. I mean, the, right. how great is that? Exactly. And I mean, it's, it's I've, I've seen the pictures of the farm and, and how you take care of every stem. And that's also very important. I think it's for the most important day of people's lives. So a florist is very, uh, uh, he's a bit stressed out because he needs to make, he or she needs to make a wedding bouquet or an arrangement. And they want to have all the roses, they, all the flowers need to be perfect. And for that special day for that special day and if i see it's all hand graded everything is checked i think a million times at, at your farm so you and it's not an easy rose to grow or all the roses you have it's not easy to grow but if you got them they've got a perfect vase life they're all in the same uh, cutting states i mean wow i mean and it, I, every florist just needs to try this not only for the weddings but also like we already said Put it in your shop. If you want to be different than the Albert Heijn or the Costco or the Asda, Tesco, whatever supermarket around the world, show these roses. Then you have something to talk about. Of course, there will be customers that say, okay, it's not in my price range, but I love to see them. And that's why they come back next time as well, to see what special you've got this time. And maybe if they have some special event, they will specially come to you for those roses. That's right. That's right. The, the presence of garden roses in your shop is going to is gonna lead to a lot of event work because people will remember. And when they get married or somebody else they know gets married, they'll say, oh, this florist works a lot with garden roses. And that's what I'm going to use. So yeah. it does bring it. And, and you know that in, in, in mixed arrangements, um, putting three or four white O'Hara's in an arrangement of 20 flowers gives that whole arrangement fragrance. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that, of course, every consumer in the world does, right? They always go and smell the roses. And many times, unfortunately, there's no fragrance. And, and the person is like, oh, okay. <laughs> but when they use garden roses with the fragrance, it's incredible the delight in their eyes when they, when they, when they take that 
that sniff. It's incredible. It's and your yeah. whole store is gonna smell if you have if you have garden roses around. The whole store will smell fragrant. It's fabulous. I mean, we we had the interview last week with Keith Lynn, and uh, we were talking about. Uh, all the senses you have, okay, you've got uh, you, your eyes, you've got your ears, but you've got your nose as well. And, and get somebody into the shop and say, okay, you have to smell these roses because the, it's, it's wonderful. It, it will, I mean, it will create something magical in your shop as well. I mean, that, that's what makes you as a, as a florist, I think, uh, stand out of, of, the, of the crowd as well. Agreed. Uh, we have a we have a couple of other spray rose new spray roses that aren't the Wabara line. We have one called Blanche. It's yeah. a French white rose that's really nice. It has a a, a garden rose aperture, a, a, a cup shape. Um, a lot of the flowers are on the top. It it is it, there aren't shoots coming up from the sides with flowers. They all seem to come up on the top like a pom pom almost. It's it's very yeah. beautiful. It's called Blanche. It's been a big success. Of course, white for wedding work is great, but this is also good for vase work. Um, and then we have a, a, a variety, a pink variety called Wedding Rose Ever that also has a very particular way of opening, very beautiful, and it's a light pink rose, which is perfect for weddings. It also has vase life, um, and it's very nice. Wedding Rose Ever, there we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Blanche and the Wedding Rose Forever, I think both of them, all the flowers are on top, which makes it uh, great to work on, on, on smaller right. arrangements, the tiny right. uh, uh, bouquets. I mean, it's 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 fantastic. Uh, then we also launched a couple of varieties uh, that are standard roses, not spray roses. One is called Special Bride. It's a Dune orange light pink. That's yeah. really rich. It has so many petals, and and the petals are like icing on a cake. It's a light pink center with a bit of a wider outside. Uh, it's likely to replace Myra's bridal pink because it's this very similar color and and but this is a, just a more beautiful shape. Yeah. Uh, it's it's brand new. We launched it uh, in 2021, and so far it's doing well. Uh, and the other one that we launched is Westminster Abbey. This is a rose that's been grown in Holland for a while uh, by a Dutch grower that has quite a following in the in the in the social media yeah. because of its unique color. And it's, it, it does have an opening. The shape is different. It's not a spiral hybrid T shape. Um, and the color is unique. Now, in Colombia, it has a little bit of a pink edge, as you can see. I don't think in Holland it has that. And in Colombia, it's a little bit more silver. In, yeah. in Holland, it's a little bit more brown. But this color has been really successful in the States um, and, well, everywhere that we sell it, even though it's a little bit different to the, the Dutch grown color. Now, why um, this color it? has done very well, and we're increasing this significantly for next year. Okay, and just to understand for me and, and, and people watching as well, uh, why is it that the colors differentiate from, from Holland and Colombia? Yeah, well, the light conditions are different, right? In, in Colombia, we have very strong ultraviolet lights, um, and we have it all year for 12 hours every day. In Holland, you have a lot less light in the winter, and you have uh, 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 electric lights some of the yeah. times. Um, and that's what gives the different shades of color. And especially pink exteriors are radiation. Uh, sometimes we like the pink exterior. Sometimes we put a special plastic uh, to reduce the pink. Um, okay. Here we have to see what the market prefers. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of uh, Holly Chapel is one of the influencers we work with. And she tells me that when, when she doesn't necessarily like bi colors, but when there are different shades of color in the rose, it helps her transition into other colors in that arrangement. So with this with this rose, you can go into pinks uh, very easily and very smoothly, and it and it would go beautifully because of that pink edge. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think that's uh, also with the white ones. If you got a real white uh, rose, it's almost difficult to to match it with other white flowers because if it's really really white. Right. It, it, it's different because then the other whites look off white or, uh, I mean, the colors, I mean, uh, especially with the big events and, and everybody watching at it and, and saying, okay, they need to match up. Then it's, it's good to have a little bit of, of, of uh, contrast in the flower or that the, the transition, like you said, is easier to go uh, to match it with other flowers. I mean, and, and uh, you also got the, uh, I think it's the standard rose Sahara sensation, but you also got it in spray now. 
Well, Sahara Sensation is a spray rose, but since we weren't sure about the market for spray roses, we drew it as a single. Yeah. Um, we're probably, it's one of the few roses that we're going to launch as both a single and a spray. Now, that's controversial. A lot of people are telling us that if we have it as a spray, nobody's going to buy the single because it's a much better value. But our designers and, and influencers that we work with, like Holly, are telling us, no, I'd like to have the same rose in a different size for the same arrangement even. Yeah. Or maybe the bridal bouquet has the singles and the tables have the sprays. Um, so we're going to go with that. And I think I think it's quite innovative to have the same variety, single and spray, for, for available to people. Yeah. It's going to be neat to see. We're going to do that with two varieties. One is called Kaori, Princess Kaori, which is a lavender color, and then the Sahara Sensation. Okay. I mean, it, it, it's really great. And I mean, the spray ones, uh, I remember, I think it's it's two or three years ago, the first one I saw uh, a green spray rose, which was still a bit oh, of... Oh, Midori. Midori, yeah, Princess Midori. <laughs> Oh, John, Princess Midori has quite a story. This was one of the this is one of the roses that I found in Hiroshima, in a nursery that overlooks the sea. It's just something like a fairy tale, yeah. um, and I immediately loved it because of the color. Um, but I but it was hard to find other people that liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so far, we've launched it for a year now, and I can say that it's taken off. Um, but I think more and more people are starting to see that it can be a support flower for an arrangement that will bring out the color of the other varieties. Yeah. Uh, but so far, it hasn't actually happened. <laughs> no, what I, do you think? Do you like that rose? I like it a lot. But yeah, I, I like strange things. And that's why I have a circus. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think people just need to see what they can do with it. I think it, it, it sometimes uh, needs somebody to make a really nice arrangement with it, and then people get the squeaks and think, well, okay, you know, we have a, like that. One of, the, uh, one of the submissions to our Garden Rose Design Contest, we have a Garden Rose Design Contest that we hold every year, and yeah. this year we held the fourth one. And in the submissions, Midori was used a lot. Maybe it's because they knew that I was a judge and that I like Midori very much. <laughs> but one of one of the great designers, the Dutch one, uh, Neppers. Yeah, Dutch Neppers. Did, yes, he did a fabulous installation full of Midori roses and white roses that made it to the 10 finalists. It's really nice. It's on our Instagram somewhere. Okay. Um, and so I'm hoping that people will see that and get ideas and start using Midori more often. I tell people that when, when Chanel or Givenchy or any of these designers have a fashion show in Paris, a lot of the dresses they show, nobody's going to wear. They're, they're too far-fetched. They're too far out there. But they're showing trends that, 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 that are in the dresses that people will actually wear. And I think Midori is one of those. It's, it's out there. But, yeah. but slowly people will start incorporating it into their work. I mean, it opens up uh, the possibilities, I think, for other uh, green spray roses or roses. And, and the first adapters, they like it a lot, but it's a small group. And, and later on, people will say, wow, I remember that when I saw it once, where is it now? But I need it. And, and most of the time, right. it's too late because you were waiting already for two years. Right. For it to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's, then, right. and that's something as well, I think what's missing now with uh, the lack of exhibitions, showing those varieties it's and, very hard. and and showing uh, what you have, get the reactions as well. Because, I mean, I think with, with the whole pandemic, a lot of things changed. The whole way people look at colors, at flowers, it, it's changed so much that I think we need to reinvent ourselves uh, to look which varieties people love at the moment. Yeah, it's um, a lot of changes. I wonder if I wonder if we're going to be able to, as an industry, maintain the interest in 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 flowers and roses that occurred during the pandemic when people staying home. We have to make an effort to keep that keep uh, keep flowers as a as a as a top of mind thing. Keep houses full of flowers for. Ever, not just yeah. during the pandemic as we get out of this i want to keep flowers inside people's homes and i think that great new products great designs fragrance shapes uh, performance in the vase are things that will help keep that trend going yeah and and i think the storytelling i 
So to be honest, and then not to to uh, embarrass anyone, or but we didn't do enough to sell our flowers. I mean, a lot of the, the, the thing in Holland, what a lot of people say, yeah, flowers will sell themselves. Just look at flowers and people will love them and they will buy them. I think with all the tricks and possibilities as well, don't forget the possibilities we have now selling on internet, uh, putting advertisements on Instagram and on Facebook, even as a local florist, to get people in and, and tell more stories about the flowers. I mean, I, there are so many wonderful stories about flowers. I think every product, it doesn't matter what it is, is jealous on what, what stories we can tell in, in, as, as the floral industry. That's right. And, and I think that the, the new generation of consumers, the millennials, are really interested in finding out the source of what they're buying, right? The story about the millennial that went to South Africa to a diamond mine to buy his fiance the diamond for her wedding. Yeah. Um, they, they want to know where things come from. And we have an amazing story to tell there because not only are there stories about the breeding, but in the growing part of it, I mean, there's the, the, all the women, uh, heads of household that work at Alexander Farms that love roses and are, are have a higher standard of living because of the sale of them is a, is a wonderful story to tell. And that yeah. we're flor verde and we sustain the environment and we are uh, socially responsible. All of those things are can be part of the story that we're telling. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's unbelievable how you went to, to Japan and, and getting varieties in. Uh, the story and then maybe uh, in, in short you went to a flower shop and they were selling a bridal bouquets uh, by the fre frequency. I mean how wonderful is that? Yeah fabulous fabulous those nurseries in, in Japan with the, the grandfather breeding the son growing and the grandson selling uh, and it happens often because they're the breeders don't sell to anybody else they breed for themselves mostly yeah. so they're breeding for their own production and their own consumption and they're very relatively small farms um, and the whole family works there uh, it's it's amazing stories and they breed these world class varieties yeah amazing and i think uh, we also need to go back a little bit and and uh, it's it's a lot of mass production i don't say it's bad but i think uh, boutique farms is the way to go for the next, I don't know, 10, 20 years, because people are really looking for uh, the source where it's coming from. Like you said, the, buying a diamond in the directly from the mine in, in South Africa, uh, telling more about where it comes from, where it's origi originated, things like that. I mean, people love those things and we need to give them that information as well so they don't lose interest in flowers and plants. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, and we have the, the mechanisms to communicate with social media and internet. Uh, we have ways of telling our customers all these stories. Yeah. They don't have to walk into the shop to hear the story. They can they can see it everywhere they are. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The the, the roses that, that are, are mass produced, the, the, the philosophy of selecting the varieties to grow is mostly based on productivity and vase life. And unfortunately, those two things many times are the opposite of what I would like to see in a rose, which is fragrance or performance or color or, or charisma, right? Yeah. So so as, as a lot of farms dedicate themselves more and more to productivity, they end up selling more and more to supermarkets where a red rose is a red rose yeah. um, and they just want it cheap. Um, and we're dedicating more and more to the florist and the bride and, and the people who are appreciating these romance that we bring back to flowers and roses. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's really the way to go. And also to tell it in, in, in their own words. I mean, we don't need to communicate all the Latin names and, and all those things. Just give the story. Uh, I mean, the names with it, all the princess names, that already does a lot for me. Right. I mean, that, right. that's already fantastic. Right, right. I, yeah, the, 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 one, one of the, we have two roses in the princess line that, the name is so particular. All of the princess line uh, uh, roses have the name princess and then the name of a Japanese woman. Now, Japanese names aren't biblical. They're more based on nature, but it's sophisticated. For Princess Maya is a peach rose that opens all the way, that has a fragrance. It's beautiful. And Maya in Japanese means night rain. 
Okay. Now, it doesn't mean thunderstorm or rain in the daytime or drizzle. It means night rain, which I think is very unique and gives you this whole feeling about the rose you're buying that helps you sell it. Yeah. And then and then the other one is called Princess Miyuki, and it's a white rose, and Miyuki means first snow, not, not second snow or slush or hail. No, mm -hmm. the first snow of the season, which is a very particular snow, and that's the color of, Mido of Miyuki. I mean, those things are, are really great. I mean, I was discussing as well at Flower Circus, how are we going to tell those stories? During our shows, we tell those stories, but yeah, you can only reach so many people during the stories. So that's why we came up with Dr. Van Bloom. And Dr. Van Bloom is, is, is my brother. Uh, he looks quite alike, but he's telling those stories about the flowers, just short videos, 30 seconds, up to a minute, this is the flower, this is the plant, or the greenery even, and this is what's happening. I mean, only this way I think we can reach a lot of people, uh, and, and even telling those stories about uh, Princess Mayuki or all those things. Uh, the audience has an attention span of, I mean, maximum one minute nowadays. It's a TikTok attention span. Yeah, and, and one minute is still uh, very difficult to get them uh, in for one minute. They'll swipe up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's if it not directly grabs your attention, I mean right. they're away. And it's it's incredible. But that's something we need to face, of course, as well, to uh not start with a bouquet and, and, and it takes forty five minutes on a live show and then look, this is the end result. People want to see the end result almost instantly. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. I mean this is also how we come up with the one minute videos, and that was Three years ago, we started with it, and everybody thought it was very short, one minute. And now I'm thinking, can we do it in 30 seconds? <laughs> right. And yeah, so, that's the way it is. But but we have the tools. Uh, and I didn't. How do how do we see Van Bloom? Doctor Van Bloom. Doctor Van Bloom. Dr. Van Bloom. On the Instagram of, of Flower Circus. He's okay, a, I'm gonna look for it. He's in a white suit and a white hat, and he is uh, yeah. I think in the last week it was uh, with Pelagonium talking about where it comes from and that it's the national uh, plant of uh, or the symbol of uh, Switzerland. Just those tiny fun facts, I think, that, that will help people sell those plants and flowers. I mean, that uh, um, that's my understanding that that's something where we need to go or this plant is attracting flower, uh, butterflies. All those tiny things, I think it, it really helps. You can see it on, on Google as well. People are searching for uh, uh, how to take care of those flowers or plants. Where do they come from? I mean, but they they search for garden roses and, and then they search for how to treat garden roses or what to do with garden roses, all those things. It's uh, Well, you know that that reminds me that one of the projects we're working on and that we hope to launch by beginning of next year is a garden rose design certificate. It's a series of courses that people can take to learn how to identify different kinds of garden roses, know the garden roses that are available because yeah. there are so many and they have so many stories that it requires study, a study of it. Uh, then learn about current handling of them. Why, how, how to use ice when you're in a desert wedding, things like that. Very, yeah. very, Ex, not just cut and put in water kind of information, but real care and handling that you can use. And then design work with garden roses, how how to make them look nicer, what you should do with them, what flowers you should uh, uh, use with them together. And and so this course is a, is a video course online that at the end, you'll actually get a certificate saying that you are certified to design with garden roses. And hopefully that'll help you when you're selling to a bride and a bride is interested in garden roses, well, hey, I'm a certified designer. Yeah. You, can, you can trust me for your garden rose needs. Um, and then, of course, they'll be part of a community with Alexander Farms and they'll see new varieties before other people will. And maybe we'll even ask them if they like these new things. Um, and we hope to launch that next year. Okay, that's really interesting. What do you think? Do you think people will be interested in something like that? For sure. Uh, actually, we were looking for the same. I think uh, the education level in some countries is very, very good, very high. Um, but in other countries, there's almost no education. And in some, 
sometimes florists that love the flower, love flowers and love arranging are looking for places. That's why all the workshops are so popular in the States. Yeah. They're looking for places to learn how to do this fun, entertaining, but, but practical. And I, yes, I think people are hungry for that more so in certain countries than others. So a lot of countries require a certificate for you to be a florist. Other yeah. countries don't. When you don't have a certificate, maybe you miss a little bit of the education on care and handling or about uh, uh, structures in your in your building and thing like that. So yeah, I think that I hope a lot of people participate, and I don't see it as a as necessarily a standalone thing. I can see how a flower school somewhere will teach all the different flower school things they teach, but add this garden rose part of it to their complete line as well. Yeah, you already directly got a reaction from uh, Dimitris. You're saying nice idea, certificate, especially garden roses, floral designers. Uh, actually, Dimitris is, is selling a lot of your roses in, in Greece, in Athens. Is that right? Yeah. Hi, Dimitris. I'm <laughs> glad to meet you. <laughs> He's buying them uh, via Holland. So it's... Uh, Terrific. Yeah. He's using a lot of them. He's doing a lot of weddings and uh, arrangements on those uh, big yachts and, and things like that. So the, Wow. Fabulous. Yeah. I'm, thank you for that. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. Tineke is saying as well, totally agree. So uh, I think uh, people already love the idea. And I mean, it's so important for people to... Uh, I've seen a lot of courses which are, let's grab the most expensive flowers, make an arrangement. And there's no technique or nothing. They don't know how to take care of the flowers, which I think it's maybe not the most spectacular thing to learn, but it's, it's the basics. You need to yeah, have that as well. You need to do, yeah. You need to know math to do accounting. Yeah, and 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 then I mean everybody wants to learn, and and now what I see happening, and I hope what will happen as well, that we get people from outside the floral industry or are so uh, enthusiastic about flowers that they will become a florist as well. I can imagine people from the fashion industry getting into the floral industry with totally new and crazy ideas, but they need to get some of the basics and let them do the creative thing themselves i mean uh, right a lot of people you need the fundamentals of care and handling and the fundamentals of design before yeah. you can really you can really work and that's that's part of what we're trying to to show care and handling is so important uh and so so many florists uh, don't realize that that's as important as it is and they don't attend to it but but with easy, fast, fun videos, um, maybe maybe they will get that education that's so important. And they'll be more successful florists because their work will last longer and yeah. their customers will be happier. That's I mean, the bottom line. they can learn from our mistakes. I mean, uh, okay, we made a mistake and not putting them on water in the right order or <laughs> things like that. Yeah, but okay. you lost the customer. <laughs> yeah, look, this is what happened. Don't, don't do it this way. I mean, uh, last week we had Keith Lynn who wasn't, wasn't in the floral industry because but he started in the floral industry doing a lot of things with trial and error and, and visiting a lot of shows, trade shows, uh, demonstrations. And that's how he learned. But a lot of trial and error. And I think if he had the possibility to do your course or watching small uh, short videos, it would help him a lot. And all those people which are now interested in, in going into the floral industry or are, are already in the floral industry but want to make uh, the next step. It will help them a lot. Yeah, now I've seen a lot of of, uh, of of new flower schools, and even the ones that already existed seem to have more interest. Um, and I'm glad for that, very glad for that. And I and I hope to support them with these sorts of additional syllabuses that they can use in their in their programs. Yeah. Um, and we hope to launch next year. It's very exciting. It's it's uh it's uh, on a platform, and you can. It's about ten videos maybe 30 or 40 minutes each. And then there's a test at the end. And they, if they pass the test, they will get the certificate. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I love the idea. I mean, this is, yeah, how, I think it, it, it's so nice. Like I said, with the packaging, if I receive a box, I already get care instructions. It's packed like a presence. It's not only like we're growing flowers, they're leaving the farm, that's it, good luck. No, it's helping the florist as yeah. well. And, and I mean, every step in the whole chain uh, to make sure uh, they get the best out of your roses. I mean, that, that's, that's right. wonderful. That's right. 
That's right. We need to follow our product all the way to the bride's hands or to the vase to make sure that everybody is happy. The end consumer has to be happy in order for us to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the end, everybody or everybody, most of the people will forget about the price. Uh, they bought something. If it was really cheap, but the bouquet dies within two days, they think they pay too much. I agree. And they get disappoint disappointed. If they paid, overpaid a little bit in their opinion, but the bouquet is there for two weeks, I mean, they will talk about it for a long time. They will tell their friends as well, I yes. bought a bouquet there with those flowers. Yes, they will consume more flowers if the vase life is longer. Some people say, no, if they last too long, they won't buy as often. But no, they will buy with much more frequency and much more often if they last longer. It's like, I remember I, I was telling somebody that if you, if batteries lasted less time, then people might sell more batteries. But I say no. I say less people would buy toys that have batteries. Less yeah. people would look for plug-in things because batteries aren't good. The longer lasting the battery is, the more batteries I'm going to end up consuming. And it's the same with flowers. We need to give them the best value so they buy more. Yeah. Yeah, and we need to make sure that the whole chain is, is correct, that the cool chain right. is good and, and things like that. Yes. We had an interview, I think it's one and a half month ago now, with uh, Jeroen van der Hulst, Flower Watch, who was really explaining every part of the chain, uh, what's there and what can be changed. He said, face life shouldn't be a problem as of, at all. Because there are so many leaks. Yeah, breeders have done a terrific job in breeding uh, varieties that last a long time. And, and in Garden Roses, we've selected or bred four cut flowers as well. It's, yeah. it's, it, and the cold chain has gotten a lot better uh, in, the, in the past years. From Colombia, I can say that, that yeah. we have the refrigeration in the airports and the flights and in Miami that, 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 that it's no longer as big of an issue as it, as it used to be. Uh, but then when we get to the wholesaler and maybe to the retail florist, I think there's still things that can be done to better to better the end result for the end consumer so you know garden roses are more delicate they need to be put in water maybe at the wholesale level they can't be kept in the in the cardboard wrap in a baker's tray for a week yeah they're not going to have the same success at the end consumer if we do that so there is still more we can do at the wholesaler and retailer level and that's it's our responsibility or or we should assume the responsibility to try and help perfect those things and help them give them the tools and the information for that to happen yeah maybe also a course for wholesalers then <laughs> <laughs> well in in the in the course we talk about what a wholesaler should do and i tell them i say if if your wholesaler isn't doing this we will call your wholesaler and help them develop these procedures yeah i mean the, we're all in it together and the wholesaler yeah, will be more happy sure. as well and it's also a bad garden rose at a wholesale level is going to reduce the consumption of garden roses in that city yeah that's it. i mean so and, and once they bought a disappointment they will try something else because right that's it uh yeah it's a wedding ro or, or most of the time uh, it's a wedding rose and they a uh, florist don't want doesn't want to take a risk with weddings it's right yeah it's too delicate yeah. I mean, I've seen so many beautiful flowers again, Joey. I mean, it's mm. unbelievable. And then uh, the stories behind it are, are great. Uh, I mean, it, it's really fantastic. And, and I hope I can see them in real life in, in Vijfhuizen again as well, or during one of our shows, so we can show those beautiful roses. I mean, people should work more often with it. Like you already said, it's not only for weddings, but also in a bouquet two, three, four, five stems makes it already a really exclusive bouquet. It really changed the look of the bouquet already. And you know, John, in the, in the, in the, in the summer months, starting in May all the way through October, wedding season is on all over the world. Yeah. Um, and we sell our roses very well. But November through March, wedding season in the States and in Europe is very low. And consumption of our roses is very poor. So we've had to go out and find different markets. Uh, the Russian market helps us out in the winter and others. But we also have a, have a special sale going on for the winter months via our wholesalers and our importers, where okay. we sell our roses at pretty much half the price they sell in the summer. And yeah. we give florists all kinds of options to buy a special pack in very small amounts. Um, and you can ask for this via your wholesaler, if you're a florist, uh, starting in November. Um, where you can get a choice of four bunches, of whatever bunches you choose, um, and you you need to take it from November through March at a very discounted price, and that gives yeah. you 
the ability to use them for vase work and to get to know the variety, see how slowly or quickly they open and become familiar with them. So when you have a wedding, you know exactly what you need to do. I mean, that's that's great. I mean, <laughs> this this actually, yeah, it's a masterclass of how you should sell your flowers, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it, I mean, yeah, uh, I had them uh, that, at a test at home and uh, I was very worried actually because I got them, uh, I think they were traveling for almost 10 days. Wow. Uh, because of some problems on, on transport and whatever, but still easily 10 days, all of the varieties. That's great. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. And, and everybody I told, uh, even some of the flower circus designers, they said they're still lasting and they said yeah but you're probably your house is 10 degrees i said no it's it's, <laughs> it's over 20 degrees <laughs> but yeah, i think uh the floors need to get more confidence in, in in the garden roses and especially your garden roses which are all tested on face life and once they see okay we can work easily with it and okay if we don't sell them today it's all also okay to sell them the day uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow because they will last for a long period. I think everybody should need to try them. Not maybe not now, but uh, if you're not sure, but at least sure. from later on. You know, in our poster and on our website, you can we we rate them. We rate their fragrance and we rate their vase life because they're not all the same. So if you're a florist and you're a little bit concerned about vase life, go with the ones that are the longest vase life there in the beginning. And if you really want fragrance, well, you can also identify the ones that have a fragrance and buy those. So you don't need to try them all to figure out which one has vase life. We'll tell you. And yeah. until you feel comfortable, you don't need to go except for the ones that are just 12 to 14 days. And then go for the 10-day ones. I mean, once great. you're comfortable. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really nice how you help out your customers just to try to sell them and, and give them more confidence. So uh, before we, we go, I've got one more question. Uh, you are seeing, of course, uh, a lot of weddings going on. Can you already see some changes in trends that uh, people go towards more to, to more colorful or is it more white or is it still the same as before the, 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 the pandemic? Well, what, what my customers are, are telling me is that they have many weddings, but they're very small. And, and, and that the average spend, expenditure on flowers is higher than normal. Yeah. Um, um, so they're using more garden roses. I'm also hearing uh, about florists trying to differentiate themselves and using garden roses. Trends in terms of colors... It's hard to say because we sell all over the world and what a trend that might be in one place I might miss because we do sell that color somewhere else or vice yeah. versa. It's hard to say what 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 does seem to be happening and has been happening for two or three years are these sand and skin toned roses. That does seem to be a long term part of the wedding business. And we every year we've launched more and more varieties in those colors. Uh, so now we have four or five or six um out of 60 so 10 percent of our line is those sand colors i hope the wow. trend continues i think it will uh but from the COVID specifically i i can't really say any trends okay. that i've seen but but yeah the, the, like you said i think one of the most important trends uh for you and for florist is that uh people use more flowers or there's more that's right. for flowers that's right and i think that's right in the end people uh now it's sitting at home for such a long time uh if there's a party, it really needs to be a party and it really needs to be special. We finally realize how special it is to be around people and, and to celebrate right. something. That's right. That's right. And, and hopefully that trend uh, will continue. That's right. And and the trend of, of people, you know, decorating their homes. And once you once you have a space that you decorate with flowers, when there aren't flowers there any longer, it seems that it's missing something. It seems empty. So. I hope that people that already got into the habit of having flowers in, in the quarantine era are going to continue to do so because they're going to feel that something is missing, that their apartment yeah. isn't totally finished unless they have flowers. I hope that trend continues. And with our roses, I think we have a good chance because we're constantly entertaining them. They bloom. They they smell. They have special colors. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it gets to all the senses. So that's that what makes them very special. And that's something... Right. 
I think uh, Flower Council in Holland is already for many years doing a great job of saying uh, after Christmas, okay, Christmas tree out, get your plant in. I mean, this should be with, with flowers as well. Okay, right. there need to be new flowers all the time. Right, right. So. Completes the space. Yeah, I mean, uh, Joey, thank you so much for your time. I mean, it's, it's great talking to you and I think we could talk for, for many more hours, but uh, <laughs> we're a bit It's my little... pleasure. Uh, yeah, and I hope to see you soon again, and uh, so we can enjoy your beautiful flowers. And, and thank you so much for everything well, you told us. I learned a lot again. So uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. I hope to see you at uh, Five Housing later on. Good luck with your shows, um, and let's keep this industry top of mind. Yeah, I think that's the that's the most important thing. We can be really happy with the sales that we had uh, the last uh, couple of months, but now it's just. Uh, keeping those sales and maybe even go higher with it because yeah, people are in love with flowers. They finally understand what flowers do with them and, and let's keep it like that. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you everybody for right. watching. I uh, hope to see you next week. Next week we've got uh, Alison Bradley in uh, talking about fusion flowers. Uh, they made their last uh, magazine uh, which is, come out, is about to come out I think this weekend. So uh, we'll talk about uh, that with Alison, about all the special moments she had uh, with her magazine. So I uh, hope to see you next week. Thank you for watching.